What is up everyone? It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I'm back with another video. This one is going to be a little bit different than the vlogs that I've been doing. I've actually invited eight USC Chan entry-level master's students in the OT program to come and just have a conversation with me, answer some questions about their experiences, student life, challenges, all of that stuff. And these students are actually my classmates, so I think this will be a really good time. And I won't be talking much, I'll be more of the moderator so that the rest of them can really share their experiences. I think this will be a really good resource, especially for those of you thinking about applying to the OT program. And so with all that being said, let's hop on the call. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. It's so good to see all of you. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for coming. This is gonna be a really chill space. We're gonna have some nice conversations, to talk about experiences and just answer some questions. And yeah, so we'll just kick it off with introductions. And for introductions, I'll have everyone say their name, their cohort, their hometown, their undergrad school and their major, and if you took a gap year and if you've had a previous career. Very loaded introduction, but I'll have it in the chat and whoever wants to go first can go ahead and start. My name is Kelly Toppenberg. Um, I'm in cohort B. I'm from Sacramento, California, so Northern California. Um, I went to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo for my undergrad and I majored in kinesiology and I took two years off in between undergrad and the Chan program. Um, I'll go next. I'm Samantha Quello. I am from uh, cohort B as well. Uh, my hometown is Whittier, California. Um, I went to Cal State Fullerton for my undergrad and I majored in kinesiology as well. And I took three year gap between my undergrad and my master's program. And I was a director of an autism clinic for that amount of time. It was really fun. Um, but then I quit the corporate world and came back to school. My name is Lamani Lucas and I'm in cohort C. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I went to Swarthmore College in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, and I studied psychology. Um, I took two years off, and I was teaching in a special education classroom in a high school, and now I'm back in school. My name is Adam Strzic, and I'm in cohort A. Uh, my hometown is Helena, Montana. And I went to Seattle University for undergrad, and I studied biology. And I took, I think, uh, like eight gap years. I worked in the nonprofit sector for a while, uh, two years doing service learning as a Jesuit volunteer, uh, a couple of years doing digital inclusion work, um, and, and then uh, two years as a director of AmeriCorps program. Hi, my name is Gabe Cravens. Uh, I'm in cohort C. My hometown is Corona, California. I went to undergrad at USC, but I did two um, years at a community college in Orange County. And I majored in gender studies. Um, and I took six months off, not a full year. Um, I worked at AIDS Project Los Angeles. Hi everyone, I am Elena Rodriguez Garza from cohort C. I was born in Abilene, Texas, and I went to Tuskegee University for my undergrad in Tuskegee, Alabama, where I studied psychology. And I took three years off where I did too many things. I was an extra, I was a fundraising manager, I was an aptitude consultant, and I joined the military and became an officer. <laughs> so a lot in three years, but I ended up um, as an aptitude consultant discovering that occupational therapy should be a field that I should explore, and that's how I ended up here. Hi, my name is Brianna Hernandez. I'm in cohort A. Uh, my hometown is Diamond Bar, California. Um, I did my undergrad at Cal Poly Pomona. I got my degree in psychology with a minor in criminal justice. I took, I think it was a year, I think, like I just graduated, applied, and then got into the program. Um, and I was working a couple of like part-time jobs as a behavior therapist and also as an early interventionist. And I'm Jeff Palomino. I'm in cohort A and my hometown is Los Angeles. And for undergrad, I attended 
Loyola Marymount University and majored in business, finance, and marketing. And I graduated from there in 2012. And about five years later, I started taking classes at night to satisfy, satisfy prereqs um, for OT applications. And then two years later in 2019, I started the program. Nice. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Um, so we're going to get into the questions now. And the first one is an icebreaker question, which is, what kind of OT were you interested in before starting the program? Has that changed and why? Alrighty, so um, I was interested. I, it was, I was pretty open, I wasn't quite sure, but I knew that I really liked working with kids. I have done some substitute teaching, camp, all the camp counseling, and I don't know, always have been like mentoring um, kids, I feel. Um, and so I really thought I was gonna um, go into pediatrics. And I found just through my experience in the other immersions that I felt just more engaged and excited and interested and passionate when I was in the mental health immersion and the adult rehabilitation immersion, um, which I was kind of surprised about, but I think I'm going to end up in one of those two settings. And that's just based on like how I felt when I was up, like learning the material and at field work and and everything. Um, kind of, sorry, Sam, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Going off of Kelly, kind of similarly, I went, I came into the program, like, kind of super set on peds, all my experience. Before hundreds and peds, I've been working with kids with um, disabilities since I was like 18. And um, I just, you know, I was like, I have that passion, I have that drive, but I was also feeling kind of feelings of burnout already just for working for around three, three years. Um, and similarly, like taking, because I'm in the pediatrics emerging right now, and I super enjoy it, but I did feel like that same passion when I was an adult and also in mental health. And my fieldwork experiences, I think I learned a lot. And for now, I'm keeping it super, super open. I'm like into hands and into mental health and into like inpatient. So I think as long as like I can be in a place where I feel like I can really like help people in the best way that I can, I think it'll be good for me, even if that means peds, like ending up in peds again also. So my story is really similar to, I honestly just thought occupational therapy was working with kids. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Someone told me like, you're so great with kids, you should look into OT. And I was like, what even is that? And I Googled it and I saw that USC had a program and it was my dream to go to USC ever since I was like 13. So I was like, let's apply, see what happens. And then I got in. And then I came in and I was placed into mental health first, being cohort B. And I was like, what is this? Like, I didn't even know you could do any of these things. And now I guess like my brain has just like expanded and I'm thinking of all of these different areas. And that's why I love OT because you can do all of it. And we've had a few guest speakers in the program, which I think is really cool about USC, how we get to like meet actual OTs while we're learning. Um, and they've changed directions a lot, like within their practice areas or just like finding something that they're really passionate about and making OT the job there. So I'm hoping to do that once school is over and I'm leaning more towards like pediatric mental health, but also a big emphasis on parents and helping like parent education um, with children on the spectrum, ODD, ADHD, and all that stuff. Okay, so I originally came, um, you hear a lot that a lot of people come to USC because they want to go into pediatrics, and I was the complete opposite. I was terrified of kids. I had never worked with kids, so that was the one thing I was like, nope, I'm good. That's the one thing I know I don't want to do, so let's see what these other immersions are about. But then the universe likes to challenge me, so that was the first immersion that I went through, and it changed my world. Honestly, I think because I hadn't worked with kids, I didn't know what the experience would be, would be like, which is why I was scared and why I was like, nope, won't do that. Um, but doing the field work that I did, it wasn't structured with OT as much. So I really got the opportunity to just engage with kids and learn how to engage with them in a way that made me and the child happy and for us to have fun and also for them to learn skills that we learned about in that immersion. And so, yeah, after that immersion, I was like, okay, I think I'm thinking about it a little bit more. And then I went through the adult rehab immersion and that solidified for me that okay, maybe adult rehab is a little bit too structured for me. I don't know if I'll get to use my creativity as much as I'd want to. Although OT, I, I think you can use creativity in all of the settings. I think for sure with kids, that's where I really want to be able to use my creativity and playfulness. So I started off interested in peds because that was how I was introduced to OT. 
And also my little, bro little brother who is on the autism spectrum has an OT. And so I saw what she was doing with my brother. And so I was interested in peds. And also to get a bit more experience, that's why I decided to work in a special education classroom. But, oh my gosh, it was so draining. I was very, 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 very tired. But I was like, it's okay. Like, I'll build tolerance. Like, it'll be fine. Like, I won't be exhausted forever. And so I, I came into the program and I still was interested in PEDS. But then I did field work in PEDS and I was just like tired, just like so tired. It was like we were going there only once a week, but I like needed to sleep for the entire week just from playing with the kids for that one day. So now I'm really, really interested in adult rehab. And I just, yeah, I, when I was doing field work in that immersion, I was like really excited to go back to work. And I did feel like I was still able to use my creativity, but I was also in an inpatient rehab facility. So the clients were just like able to do a lot of things with me. Um, so that's where I am now. Definitely want to work with adults, not kids. Coming to the program, I was interested in peds, like a lot of us, um, working with youth and their families, um, specifically in the hospital setting. But after a year of classes and field work and other opportunities, I've really come to learn how far reaching the scope of OT practice really is. So now um, I'm still interested in working um, with children, but I've opened myself up more to the po other possibilities such as mental health because I really enjoyed that immersion last semester or a couple of semesters ago and I've opened myself up to other settings as well such as the community setting or school-based or outpatient clinics so essentially as of right now I'm still not exactly sure where I want to end up or where, where I will end up but I don't know if anything that makes it that much more exciting um, and stressful but mostly exciting so I entered grad school knowing that I wanted to work with adults and do community-based occupational therapy. Um, and also to use the OT lens to help community members to use digital technology to live richer lives. Um, and my favorite two immersions in the program have definitely been adult rehabilitation and mental health. Although I just started PEDS, so I guess I should probably give PEDS a fair shot. Um, in any case, uh, I didn't really know what specific populations I wanted to work with um, or what practice areas would allow me to do this sort of work that I was interested in. And so at this point, after being in the program for um, over a year, I'm thinking I want to operate in like the realms of like mental health and productive aging and health and wellness. And then I want to engage in like an innovative combination of home health and lifestyle redesign and primary care and maybe some neuro. And I want to enhance all of it by using digital technology. So basically like the goal is to be like an OT DJ, just like remixing a bunch of my different interests. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So similarly, um, like Adam, I have like a mix of things that I want to do, but I did come into um ot school wanting to do like mental health um and or health and wellness um but then i did uh adult rehab and i had hands um and for and i did not think i was gonna like hands but i did and i think it was because i was like talking to the clients and learning about their lives and it, and it really connected to me uh to like their mental health um but then also i've been interested in like pedagogy and um kind of compiling um you know research to also give to like ot uh, students um, in like undergrad programs um kind of uh pushing diversity and equity um into like ot best practices so i'm really not sure what i want to do yet but um those sound uh most interesting to me Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing that OT DJ thing. I'm going to use that now. That's so cool. We'll, we'll go on to the next question now, which is, what's been your favorite class so far? And it can even be a class you are taking right now. I could go. Um, I think 
a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but um, enjoyed crafts class over the summer. Um, I just really, you know, I was there every time we had class and um, I never felt like I had that much creativity in me until I actually took that class because I had like the resources to do different things that I wanted to do. Um, and it's honestly like bled over to like the rest of my semesters where I have like I take it on myself, like art projects on myself. Um, so that class has definitely like helped me and I feel like it's even helped me be more structured like with my schoolwork because I want to get to that, like to the crafts or like the arts um, that I'm doing. Um, so I feel like arts was really good. I enjoyed going to crafts class just to watch Gabe engage in crafting. I enjoyed crafts too. But sort of more recently, I really enjoyed my um, the advanced seminar in occupational science uh, with Danny Park, which was this past summer. And I feel like the timing of that class was really, really good, um, considering sort of what, what's going on around us in the world, specific, specifically the pandemic. So I feel like a lot of concepts about occupation and health and well-being were really tied into um, what was going on, what is going on. Um, sort of more in the moment. Um, and it really, our instructors really challenged me to think more critically about occupation and occupational justice and, and topics such as those. Yeah, Jeff, I wanna piggyback off of what you just said. Um, my favorite class was therapeutic communication. So it's known as like motivational interviewing, but occupational science was the second one that I had written down to prepare for this chill conversation. Um, and I think it was because it's sort of going back to that concept I was talking about where like OTs can be found anywhere. And I feel like OT is a perfect like profession to advocate for everyone. Um, and it's okay to like question our own profession and our own best practices and what we're doing to make sure that everyone is getting like fair access to all of the occupations that they're trying to you know, do every day and the social constructs and like the government access, like all of that stuff around people. Um, so that was cool. But motivational interviewing is hands down my like most favorite class. Um, it taught me how to speak with people in my day to day life, but then also like as a future therapist, um, I just gained so much knowledge. Like first day I already was like using stuff with my friends and my family and starting to pick up on like better conversations. It was incredible love it dr diaz is the best so i have a lot of favorite classes but we don't have time to review all of my favorite classes uh so i want to talk about the occupation center programs for the community class i am really passionate of course as i mentioned earlier about mental health and so dr deborah pitts who is like a legendary occupational therapist trailblazer in the field of mental health she led our class and I asked her if I could um, do my, my own project, community-based project, and she was kind enough to do consultation with me basically all semester one-on-one, -on -one, which is incredible. So I ended up creating this program in partnership with a local organization called The Painted Brain uh, that addresses the employment needs of adults labeled with serious mental illness. And so I was able to uh, bring my passion for addressing mental health needs together with um, digital literacy and digital inclusion initiatives. And so the program that I ultimately created kind of offered this common, unique combination of um, individual placement and support services and cognitive remediation, as well as a, a digital literacy component. Thanks for sharing, um, everyone. I've taken all those classes, crafts, um, OS, motivational interviewing, community-centered programs, and I really resonate with what everyone says. So thank you so much. Um, we'll go on to the next question now, which is, what are some challenges y'all have faced during the program? So I don't mind going first. Um, I have kind of two challenges. One, I guess, related to like being in the program and managing the workload, but then the other one is more so outside of the program. I think it was one of my big worries moving all the way across the country, um, like not having social support. So that was, and still is kind of a challenge for me, especially because not even a full year after being here, the pandemic hit. And so I felt like my opportunities to really find support 
just outside of OT school is really limited. Um, but what has really been my saving grace is honestly the people in the OT program that I've developed relationships with. So I think really finding your tribe in OT school is amazing. Um, and like we share notes, we're doing wake up calls, we're texting each other, like, did you catch what she said? Okay, when's the deadline? Like even me and Gabe were texting this morning, like, wait, what videos do we have to do for mental health? So just really finding your tribe and staying connected, especially at this time, I think is one of the most important things that's helped me overcome that challenge. And hopefully when this is all over, I can find some more LA support. Um, so if you're somebody who's worried about being away from your family, I know how difficult that is. And I know it's really scary, but trust me, you can do it. And also I found a lot of support in like the research lab that I was at and even the professors, meeting some of the professors, like Sam talked about Dr. Diaz. He's amazing. He's been one of my mentors and has really been helpful in helping me get resources here. And then the other challenge is I think for me personally is just, I've really learned to advocate for myself is like managing the workload from undergrad. And I had that three year grad three-year gap to grad school, it's just a different ball game. And you really have to prioritize yourself, prioritize self-care, learn how to set boundaries and learn how to stand up for yourself. Um, because everybody that I've talked to, not just in this program, but everybody that I've talked to who's gone through a grad school program, they're like, it's a little bit inhumane. <laughs> like the expectations are really high. And I'm not saying it's impossible. Like, you know, it makes you stronger and you come out and you're a really good practitioner, but you have to really learn how I take care of yourself while you're in school so you can practice those things while you're outside of school. So yeah, I just wanted to say it's going to be tough while you're in there. We're still in it, but we're going to make it and uh, find your tribe. And I think that's really helpful. So I think going off kind of what Elena said about finding your tribe, I think for me, a really big problem I had, I had two also, but a big one was imposter syndrome. I think that's like huge. And I know a lot of people feel the same way, but it's, it is really hard, I think, to go from undergrad and to go into graduate school. And like, if like for me personally, I didn't really struggle too hard at undergrad, but I struggled a lot um, out in grad school. And to have these kind of like feelings of like, oh, I don't belong here or like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, and you kind of like look around and you know, there's people like Adam and he's so amazing and he's so passionate. And almost it's like, it's so hard to like look at yourself and kind of be like, oh, like, am I supposed to be an OT? Am I in the right place? But um, like kind of Elena said, you know, finding a tribe. I have a really, really, really like amazing group of friends who like constantly hype me up. Even Calvin out here, you know, um, constantly hypes me up. Like Adam constantly hypes me up. Like my girls, it's just, yeah, thank you, Adam. <laughs> so it's just, it's just finding those people. And um, again, it's the same thing with the professors, like, like reaching out to them and like letting them know you have these feelings and like kind of fostering that relationship, even with the professors or just like anyone in the program, obviously, like I think, um, a really big kind of constant in OT is that these people like care. That's kind of maybe that's why we're in this profession because we all have this like innate feeling of just wanting to care and like just hype each other up. And so like, I think I have mostly gotten over it. And I think that like having the right people who are, who are always going to be there for you and who are always there to like validate your feelings and to also remind you what you're capable of and what, you know, like what you have been doing the program so far. Um, it's, it's really helpful. So yeah, just again, find, find your humans in the group. Um, in the program, whether that be professors, again, your friends or whoever? Yeah, so similarly, imposter syndrome is real. Um, I'm the first person in my family to go to college, so I feel like I've always just kind of been thrown into situations and kind of trying to figure it out somehow. Um, and that's, that's definitely one. Um, another one was just like, you know, fitting in, I guess you could say, um, and like finding my community. Um, I normally like seek out um, folks that like have similar identities of, as me. So like I identify as queer. So like, uh, definitely like OTs for outreach really helped me, um, little plug there. And, um, yeah. So just finding your community. I mean, we're all saying this, but you know, finding a community and obviously people that don't identify as queer are definitely my true and great friends. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, um, I feel like I'm going to be saying a lot of what was already mentioned, but like Gabe said, imposterism is very prevalent. Um, I'm also the first in my family to go to college, so I feel the same way as Gabe. It was like just figuring things out on my own, basically. And then I think coming to USC, it was difficult because there's like a hundred, we're a really big program. So it's like 140 of us. So I was expecting to see a few more black people, but 
besides me was only two others. So it was a bit of a shocker. And then there's also not a lot of black like teaching faculty. So that also was like, who do I go to? But I guess another plug, but for a person, Dr. Envarazade just kind of makes herself available. Um, I didn't reach out to her, but I think she like contacted me through another student or something. And then I found myself just like being in her office sometimes. And then the other thing, because like the, like the black community is so small, it makes it very tight and close. Like I'm in a group chat with Dr. Bodison, which is like pretty cool, I feel like. And we actually like talk to each other about our challenges, her like being a black faculty member and me being a black student. And it just, there's something like really special in that. So it's nice having that little silver lining. And then knowing that these few people, though it is few, like they really have my best interests at heart. And also um, it won't be this way for very long because Dr. Envarzal, is doing really great work with holistic admission admissions so hopefully you know with the more classes coming in they won't have to feel the same way that I did it's getting better thank you so much for sharing your challenges um, all of it I, I I don't even have words to describe but like there were definitely some challenges that were shared in this conversation that I definitely felt over the program so thank you all for sharing those and, you know, having the vulnerability to do that. We're going to move on to the next question, which is, what's your favorite memory at USC Chan so far? There are so, so, so many amazing memories that I, that I have made the past year and a half. Um, it's hard to choose just one because it's been such an amazing experience and everyone, you look around in class and just everyone is so brilliant and kind and wonderful. Um, so every day is a good memory, but if I had to choose one, um, in one course, um, one of our professors had us take maybe 20 minutes. And so um, the courses were in teams, it's team-based learning. So we have about, there's eight of us at a table. And so he had us take the first 20 minutes of the class to um, email everyone on our team and tell them how uh, they facilitated our learning and um, how, why and how we appreciated them. And we had no idea we were going to do that and he took time out of class and um, it just, it not only felt good to receive seven other messages from my sweet teammates who I had been getting so close to over the semester. Um, and we, have, we had such like vulnerable and emotional conversations. It was just a really good team. Um, but to receive their messages felt really nice and also to really reflect and think about their good qualities and um, how they facilitated my learning and my experience that semester was really nice as well. So it just, it was like a great day because we were just sharing the love. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorite memories. I completely forgot about that, Kelly, but that really was a really great day. I'm so glad we did that in this program. So many reasons why this program is so great. Um, one of my favorite memories, well, if, if anyone follows the USC Chan Instagram account, you already know this because I said it there, but it was very early on in the program. In kinesiology, Dr. Rafidi was teaching us about the gait cycle and a wonderful cycle. I love how we all practice it all the time in lab. Um, and, you know, to just like really drill it in she played Walk It Out. When did that song come out? Was it like 2000 and like 2008 or something? We, yeah, we were young little kiddos, but um, I hadn't heard that song in so long. And I just was not expecting for my time to be like reintroduced to that song to be in a grad school classroom. So um that just like gave me that was so much joy that day i was really happy and i mean rafiti always makes you happy she's always doing like the right thing even like little things like that it's just like yes that was really great i needed that i didn't know i did but i did um so that's one of my favorite memories one out of a thousand
like everyone was saying, there are so many incredible memories. It's like hard to whittle it down to one. But I want to share this one because um, because Jeff is here and Jeff, Jeff was a, an important part of this memory. So during your first summer in the program, uh, you all pack into this like massive lecture hall, which is a wonderful experience, especially at first, because you're taking kinesiology with Dr. Rafidi and she just brings it every day. And you have these awesome like three minute dance parties to get hyped for class or to take a break midway through class to keep you energized. Uh, and so part of a requirement for the program is you have to become a member of the National Occupational Therapy Association. So that's AOTA. And also you have to become a, uh, an OTAC member uh, for the state of California. And um, as sort of incentive for doing this, we had a, I believe it was like every week, we had uh, like a like a raffle. And so everyone in the program's names were put onto this like wheel of fortune type thing. And so right, <laughs> right before we're about to do this, Jeff looks me in the eyes and this is like a new friendship we're having, but Jeff looks me in the eyes and he goes, Adam, you will win. You're going to win this. And sure enough, the wheel of the digital wheel gets spun and I win this like award to like go up, not an award. I didn't win an award. <laughs> I want a raffle just to clarify walk up I got like a mug and like some cool USC swag but Jeff totally called it and it was just like such a magical experience I remember I went up and I hugged Dr. Rafiti and I was like oh shoot I might not I didn't ask for permission there was no consent involved I literally was just felt so much joy that I like hugged Dr. Rafiti in front of our entire class so yeah I also have an I have an Adam memory which is funny because he had a Kind of a me memory um so this was last year um last fall we were taking a quantitative research class and at the very end of the semester um every group had a chance to or we were required to um present our semester long um projects on a poster board so it was this really fun night with food and everyone was dressed up and it was just in the evening so it was kind of cool and um, Adam was in my group, and um, after we presented and everything, it was super fun. And Adam had a great time because this is like his thing. Our our project was on mindfulness-based interventions, um, so Adam was super hyped about it. So afterwards, um, walking back to the parking lot on campus, um, Adam asked me for a ride. So him and I and a couple other people are walking back to the parking lot. Um, I'm holding our poster board up just because it's so big. I'm holding it up, walking to the car. And as we're walking, the parking lot attendant's there. And he asks, hey, what, what's that poster for? And Adam, he's still hyped from what we did when we did the poster presentation like an hour before. He just gets in presentation mode and starts presenting our entire project in the middle of the parking lot, like at 10 at night to this parking lot attendant. And I have a picture of it. And it's, it was really funny and it was so great. And I think we had some extra sandwiches or something. And Jeff, I remember you noting that this man like was being kind and friendly to us, but was like eyeballing these sandwiches the whole time. <laughs> and so I'm giving this presentation and thinking that he's just like loving, loving this experience. And the reality is he probably just wanted a sandwich. <laughs> That's the most wholesome story I've ever heard. Oh my God, these are great. Because sometimes like when you, when you get asked this question, you can't really think of it on the spot. But like hearing this is like, like I flashed back and I wish I was there with the parking attendant for the sandwich and the presentation. <laughs> but thank you all for sharing. Um, we are now gonna move on to the last question, which is what advice do you all have for students thinking about applying to USC Chan? Um, I would have to say that you belong here and you will feel like you don't. <laughs> One of my favorite memories, I guess, kind of going back to that other question was like first day I thought they were going to tell me just kidding. It was a mistake and you didn't get <laughs> into this program because I just couldn't believe that I was actually there. And I had to call my dad and be like, dad, what if they tell me it was a mistake? Like, what do I do? I'm all dressed up and I met these people and then tomorrow I'm not going to come to school. They're like, what are they going to think? Um, and I actually spoke at a um, 
OT conference at another college giving the same advice to people. So I'm flashing back to that. And it's basically be yourself. And yes, there's like the numbers and the GPA and the classes you have to take. And it's a, a long road to get to OT school. And it's a long road, like the longest road probably when you're in school. But every step of the way, you've been like made uniquely for whatever it is that you're going to be doing with OT in the future. It's like inside of you. Um, and just be yourself, like be as 100% completely authentic and the admissions people, especially the way that admissions are going for the future, they'll see that and they're going to want you to be a part of this program. Um, every single person I've met, I like can't believe I lived without them or I, I never knew them before this program because I'm like taking, you know, like little things about their personality and about their brain and the way they think and the way that they reason into what I'm going to become as a therapist. So just know that you belong here because you're not only going to be learning, but you're going to be teaching other people along the way. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say similarly, just do it. Um, honestly, this was uh, the only school I applied to because I didn't think I was going to get in, actually. Um, because I'll be honest with you, my GRE scores didn't, like, you know, weren't there. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I was scared, uh, but also I was just like, if I get in, I get in. If I don't, I don't. And so they, you know, they look at your, you know, everything else other than just numbers. So I really think you should just go for it. I think very similarly, but I think USC can seem very intimidating. Um, Los Angeles can seem very intimidating. I had been here maybe once before when I was like at Disneyland when I was under 10 years old, maybe. Is that even in LA? I don't know if that counts. But anyways, it's really intimidating. But the, the Chan OT division functions a little bit separately and independently of the main campus. And it's super special and super welcoming. The faculty and um, staff and all the students are so warm and welcoming. Um, you feel just like you, you will you will get that imposter syndrome, but everyone works so hard to make sure that you move past that. Um, and yeah, I'm just so grateful. It was such a good decision to um, come here and you should too. Also about LA, it's amazing. Um, it's super intimidating, but there's a little spot for you in LA. You'll find it. So kind of going off what everybody said, so just do it, kind of what Gabe said, I think. Same thing, I was like the only school I applied to and I was like on the fence of like whether I should wait, like what if I'm not ready? And honestly, like to be honest, I don't think anyone's ever really ready for grad school. But like, again, the people, the faculty at Chan, your fellow students, everyone here, it's just a really, I think, supportive community um again going kind of going back to what we said before if you find your if you find your people it is very supportive and you will figure it out like it seems like i had this kind of thought the other day and i was like i can't believe we're in our last semester of like classes like where did the time go like, i remember like driving to school my first day and like again kind of sound like freaking out i was like what if i don't, I don't even know where the building is like i didn't know where orientation was i was like waiting in line for like a different orientation like yeah it was like that kind of where starbucks is and i was like okay this isn't even me like my name's out in here i'm going home you know but and now it's like we're almost done we're about to go on like our level two field work we're about to take our comp exam and i just want to say like you will you will find your way and you will make it like with the help of everyone here and through your own like sure willpower you will make it and like i think another thing i want to say is like really just making the best out of any situation you're in i know at let's see like you hear a lot of things and like it's easy to come into this program with a lot of expectations like I want to go to this place for fieldwork I want to go I want to have this professor I want to like I want to take this class and even if it doesn't go your way I think for me personally and like I like getting sent to like the fieldworks I did I was like super kind of like annoyed at it in the beginning but those were like the best experiences I've ever had like really found out about myself as a person like found out like about myself as an OT, things like that. And so just really making the best out of the situation because what you put in is what you're going to get out. And also, yeah, just do it. USC is the best school in the world. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so I definitely agree with what everybody has said so far. I think I'm going to give a little bit more practical advice and just say that 
it's kind of like a relationship when you're thinking about going to grad school, because like I said, grad school is so tough. It's, you know, it's a big workload. It's a big life change, especially if you haven't been just going straight through school. Um, so think of it as when you're applying to a school, whether it's USC or another school, that you're interviewing that school as much as they're interviewing you, right? So ask all the questions about things that are important to you. And like we've talked about, you know, things like imposter syndrome, things like diversity inclusion, if those things are important to you, like that was important to me. Those were questions that I was asking through the process so that I wasn't blindsided when I actually started the program. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to people who have gone through the program and aren't necessarily affiliated with the program anymore so that maybe you can feel like they can give you more unfiltered answers. And not that I think that USC won't lie to you, but you know, I think everybody has a different perspective. So I think that's really important too, is talking to different people. Um, and getting their opinions. So that's my advice is definitely find the right fit for you, whether that's USC or not. And just like Brianna said, kind of make the best out of it. It's a relationship. So you have to work on both ends of it. So advocate for yourself and, you know, give USC some grace too, and whatever school you go to and whatever it is, just become a great OT. I'm sure you will. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. I, I echo all those sentiments and it's it's clear like talking with all of you and being on the zoom call how amazing it is to be here and how supportive of a system um it is here at usd chan so thank you all for sharing thank you all for coming and being part of this conversation i'm really excited to have this available to people and for y'all to look back at and i think it's going to serve as a really great resource for prospective students for just people to watch and have some fun we had some fun conversations i'm definitely going to rewatch this um, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And we'll end it at that. Thank you so much for sticking around and joining the conversation. I hope that it was informative. I hope that it answered the questions that you might've had about student life and about the other things that we talked about. Major, major shout out to the second year master's students that joined in on this call. Seriously, they made this conversation and I think they all had such amazing things to share. So shout out to Lamani, to Kelly, Bree, Adam, Jeff, Elena, Sam, and Gabe. Thank you all so much for coming through. And thank you all for watching. Again, I hope this was a very informative experience. Hopefully later in the future, I'll be able to make some more of these videos with other people in the USC Chan division. But until then, I will see you next time and fight on.